I got it. I got it. Oh, shit. I'm oh, oh, did it go rack it? <laughs> That's good. That's perfect. Great. show where I, your host, Alyssa Marino, eat cereal, talk about stuff, and sometimes talk to people. I have a people right here with me. It is none other than the problem, Marina Shafir. Hello, Marina Shafir. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I am so delighted to have you here with me today on this episode. Now, you actually picked today's cereal, so we're going to do a little drum roll, please. Blueberry checks. That's right. Oh. Free baby. You inspired me to make some new addition to my usual cereal preparation. Can you tell me a little bit more about dandies, vegan marshmallows that we're going to be adding to today's cereal preparation? So what happened was <laughs> a little accident happened where I was just casually holding a bag of marshmallows and Roddy just bumped into me and it flew into the bowl. Okay. And then I was like, oh wow, um, these need to go in a bowl of cereal. Okay. And fresh marshmallows are way better than dried marshmallows in my opinion. Because I'm a person of, uh, like I have uh, certain um, textures. Okay. So the soft with the crunchy and then the moisture, it's just Ooh. unprecedented. So um, Dandy's marshmallows are the business. Well, I'm gonna let you do it up for me. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. Okay, I love um, this. Yeah, that's this well, is I ratios. Just go for, no, just ratios. Me. Ratios. It's all about. We're also gonna make some up for Troy. Yeah, Troy, you wanna guests. pick how many marshmallows you want in your bowl, dude? I want it ten. <laughs> Two hands. Watch the bowl. Walk calmly to your spot. Enjoy. <laughs> we love our cameos on Let's Get Cereal. Please. Oh, I got it. I got it. Oh, shit. Oh, oh did it go rack it? <laughs> That's good. That's perfect. Great. Oh, and I love, we're already getting a nice blueberry aroma. See, now it's an interesting new addition with the marshmallows having to adjust the pour of the milk. Okay. Yes. Oh All right. God, this is it. I'm very excited to see what you think of it. I'm excited. My friend, Let's mm -hmm. Get Cereal. Mm. Let's Get Cereal. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is different. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm very much enjoying this. Marina, thank you for changing this cereal eating experience and for sharing these dandies, marshmallows with me. Now, cereal to me mm -hmm. always reminds me of being a little kid. Oh, yeah. So, I'm curious to know, what was the problem like as a problem child? Mm-hmm. Well, I was a tough gal. Mm. Okay. Well, I was uh, raised in the streets of Troy, New York, so. I mean, not much going up there, going on there in Troy, New York, but just a lot of hills and weather. Okay, okay. So I played outside a lot, mm. and like, I think the problem was, I just never wanted to stop playing. That seems to be a common theme amongst kids. Yeah. The idea of like, Oh, you know, come back in when the street lights come on, mm -hmm. but if you're out kind of where there's not a whole lot, but like nature happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I could see that getting a little, a little unruly. And like when we moved into this apartment complex and we immigrated to upstate New York, I played with like kids from all sorts of cultures. Mm. And the problem for my mom was like if I was in trouble and I wasn't allowed to go outside, the kids still came over to see if I could go outside to play because there's no cell phones. No. You know what I mean? They yeah. didn't have my number, they just knew where I lived. Okay. So like, on days that I was like, not allowed to go outside, I have like six kids like, come to the apartment and be like, can we gonna come outside and play? My mom's like, no, she's in trouble. Oh my gosh. Go away. Get out of here. Aw. Yeah. Okay, I feel that, but, kind of, what was your personality like? What, were, what, like? what kind of interest did you have? Was it just the idea of like being outside and playing or did you have other things? I know you started like mixed martial arts and combat sports yeah. at a young age. Oh yeah, um, play, like playing was the basis of it all. Mm. I also had two older brothers. Mm. And they, like, my oldest brother was like super tough guy. 
and like I thought it was cool to be tough. So I was like a tough gal in a sense and I like I was interested in the things that I was just always sports mm -hmm. and food. Mm. Oh yeah. Okay. Like cereal when I was growing up, we could only really afford like cornflakes with okay. no sugar. And like, probably no marshmallows either. Definitely no marshmallows. I think the first time I had a s'more was when I was like 13, Whoa. 14. Okay. Wow, that's life changing. S'mores are pretty yeah. dope. Okay. Seriously, I didn't even know that thing was a, that that was like a thing. Wow. But I was just um Yeah, I was kind of like in it for myself because my brothers just bullied me a little bit and that like hardened me up. And uh, I was still very playful. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like that kind of speaks to kind of your your path that led you into more MMA and, and kind of doing these like harder, tougher things? Yeah. I think that's like kind of a, a language that I learned to speak over time. Mm. And that's, I found, I found how to make it like an outlet, not like when you have fun, it's to shake everything off, right? Like yeah. what's the intention of having fun? It's to like break up, sometimes break up the monotony and just like open your mind to a pleasurable experience, right? Yeah. So I understood, like I think I, that was the sports and like combat and all that stuff. Like that's where I changed, I feel like I changed my mentality where like I was having fun and I understood that I was like getting something out. Okay. You know okay. What I mean? Yeah, no, totally. Like it was like, oh, I feel better. Like, yeah. Like understanding kind of like endorphins and like yeah. happy hormones and all that stuff. Like, yeah. And I can imagine too, kind of as you, as you were describing your upbringing, if you didn't have an outlet like that, if things might have been kind of different for you, like having this kind of place where you could get out energy in, in kind of a full contact way. Yeah. Sure. In a martial artsy way with like other people who kind of understand the same thing and have similar but different intentions. Okay. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, I when it really becomes a selfless thing, mm -hmm. when you like surrender to the process of becoming a martial artist, whatever they say, not <laughs> Troy don't say that. That level of, like, if you're willing to be that vulnerable, expect the other person to be that vulnerable with you. And then it's like a chess game. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. Cause it's like, yeah, if you really put all your cards on the table, then mm -hmm. it is more of a mental aspect yeah. of it as well. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, and you said about it being a selfless thing. And I'm curious too, you had made this this funny post about uh, how you know self-care can include eating 80 pizza rolls and doing a face mask. And 80 milligrams of caffeine. There you go. And and self-care, mm -hmm. I think, can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. So what does self-care look like to you? And maybe it is 80 pizza rolls <laughs> and face masks. You know, sometimes it is that. Yeah. Like, I'm not foreign to you know, popping a couple of frozen pizzas in the oven and uh, cracking a bottle of Barefoot and just calling it a day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I still do that. But that also, just like anything else, you realize like that's gotta have a limit. I suppose, I suppose. You know, but yeah. you gotta get it out. Sometimes like that's what I have to do to force myself to do nothing. Yes, okay. Cause I feel like you're someone whose mind is always kind of working overtime Mm -hmm. And body is always working over time, mm -hmm. whether it be mm -hmm. training or... I noticed you have uh, interest in, in gardening, planting a garden, and mm -hmm. baking bread. So, Ooh, yeah. of course, you know, from one carb lover to another. I got you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Got you. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed on social media that I wanted to ask you about, because I, I like to do more research, mm -hmm. I noticed that you and your family will go out and you'll actually pick up trash around your neighborhood. <laughs> is this something that you have done from a young age that you carried through and have passed the tradition down? Or when did this kind of start? Um, the trash picking up. Yeah, we started trash picking up. Uh, we call ourselves the trash picker uppers. Trash picker uppers, love and it. We attack, we attack the neighborhood with trash picking up prompts. And Sick. yeah, <laughs> I know, fighting crime. And that happened actually the beginning of COVID. Oh, okay. Like when the pandemic first hit, mm -hmm. like we still wanted to go outside yep. in our neighborhood, like people drive fast and they throw stuff out the window right. and it's so nasty. Like I, it's just annoying. So Roddy was the one that actually got 
the idea to get those. So he got one set, mm -hmm. and then he realized, oh, we need two. Like, <laughs> he can't be the only one to do it. Right. And then, like, we just started doing it. We haven't done it in a while. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Gotta get back out in the streets. Gotta fight that litter, you know? I know, we gotta fight that <laughs> litter. It's a never ending battle. So, we, we need manpower. And woman power. Right. right. Person power. Person power. Mm -hmm. So now, kind of reflecting back, obviously, the last you know, two years have been kind of wild and mm -hmm. we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Reflecting back on the year that you've had and some of the different opportunities that you've taken on, what, is, what has really been maybe one or two moments to you that you're really proud of from 2021? Um, and personally or professionally? Personally proud of... Personally proud of um, finalizing all this stuff uh, for building this home that we're building. Yeah. I mean, it was ve it's been a very stressful uh, endeavor. <laughs> and uh, our, our, te our patience was, was and is still being tested. But, uh, you know, we're still chugging along. Mm -hmm. um, professionally, I think the one match that I'm, like, super proud of was my blood sport match with Masha. Hell yes. Like, because that was just, like, a culmination of a lot of stresses through 2021. And I was able to, like, put it out there. Like, I literally left it all out there. And I could say that. Yeah. And walk away from it. And, like, I want to be able to have matches where it's, like, after I could just be, like, Oh, well, I don't need to wrestle ever again. Yeah, like if that were the last time I step in a ring, I'm I'm good with I'm that. I'm totally fine with it. Okay, all Because right. like, they always say, you know, well not they, but it's said, it's been said like, you want to be able to get to a level of just being able to leave it all out there. Yeah. And, you know, say that you really did give it your best effort with that, all the tools that you have or whatever, or how good they are. Yeah. yeah. But personally, um, I started making bread finally. Mm. Bread. And committing to that. It's been annoying, sure. My husband is like, this <laughs> bread making hobby is taking up a lot of your time. A lot of kitchen counter space, I'm <laughs> sure. Oh. <laughs> Refrigerator space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then he takes a bite of bread and it just seems kind of go away, so I don't know. It's like the stresses with building the house. Once everything is done, it will all be worth it. Yeah. Okay, so, um, but now to take it back to, back into kind of the in-ring competition, uh, something I noticed too for entrance music, mm -hmm. and even for the music that's been used, these very chilling strings that were used in some promos that you've done, what is kind of your relationship to classical music? Is this something that like holds a significance for you? That's the reason, um, I kind of had to backtrack, figure out like what the problem really was. Correct. Um, and it kind of stemmed back to a, a time with my dad, because my dad was like my biggest influence on my athletic endeavors. Like, it was just a, I just really wanted to make him proud. And like, there was, there were times where he would train me in our garage and stuff, and like in the dead of winter, he's got like a little space heater on. <laughs> And like we only ever listen to classical music wow. or Russian folk music, like okay. like stringy stuff, yeah. like orchestra, classical, Russian music, French music, like okay. just orchestra, but like from different countries. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, like instrumental music, but from different different countries, and that's what he was into. Because I don't know, uh, there's so many lyrics now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it could be even distracting. I remember talking to Andy about it where at the at the gym, it's like you don't want to listen to things with lyrics because you might get like caught up kind of singing along or something. Yeah. So having a complete instrumental maybe kind of forces you to focus more. Yeah. Yeah, and it also, I feel like, in the sense of storytelling, mm. if you really understand it, then you know like where it's going. You know, yeah. like so you, you, you know you're going to feel heartbreak or you like, you know you're going to feel happiness or you know you're going to feel that like I feel like I was able to like I don't know get some type of this focus like a, or an idea of focus while I was listening to this music while I trained with my dad he was just but like, he was this huge man 
Like my dad was a professional uh, Olympic powerlifter. Like Whoa. he was just a big, he had like lobster fingers. Like they were just huge hands and like his fingers were just enormous. And he was a mechanic too. Dang. I know. And uh, when he was a mechanic, when he would have to like get into spaces underneath the car, his hands wouldn't fit. So he would had an assistant. Like, you know, just get, okay. He's like, this is the problem. I can't get to it. I need you to like come in like, oh. Yeah. That's actually really funny. Yeah, he was a big guy. He just, it, he had this like, I, es, like I'm trying to like captivate the essence that he taught me. Like, he's a really big guy, mm -hmm. quiet, mm -hmm. and like, you always got the sense of like, you probably shouldn't mess with this person. And do you feel like that's where you took a lot of inspiration for the problem? Uh, yeah, because my dad rubbed off on me like a lot, and he, you know, we talked about. You know, just, or, yeah, like, I, he knew what my strengths were. Okay. You know, like, so well that, like, I don't know, we had just had this, like, nonverbal communication. Hmm. Really weird. Whoa, okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just this sense of a person that I knew who existed and people legitimately, like, just, respected his presence you just you know what I mean yeah 1000% yeah like that's what I'm trying like that's not what I'm trying that's what I am like that my dad gave me that I have that essence about me I'm not trying hard when I'm I turn it on and then when I'm done I turn it off and I go back to like normal life it's chilling too to just kind of watch how you carry yourself because you really it, it really does command attention so I thank you yeah 1000% thank you uh and and so going from uh classical music is that something that you also now use when you are, because you, you post a lot of like training videos, is it something with how your MMA training goes, are you really even able to like listen to music? Because I can imagine if you're sparring. Yes. Oh, you can. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. I love I love listening to music um, during training. It's I get really picky. Like mm. I go to the same stations sometimes, like on a, on a just because like I know I'm activating that part of my brain that like I need to be like used, or that mindset that I need to be using going into training. Because... Okay. You gotta get riled up, right? Yeah. But like when it's showtime or like when it's time to go or grapple or spar or whatever, then it's like I don't have to worry about being able to just shut that off and just go into the person that I need to be. Like I'm still myself, but like the lens is different. Okay, it's like you have to kind of get switched into that yes. mindset. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. And, I, and you know, I believe that what, um, I don't know if it was a Chinese proverb, but like everybody's got like seven faces or something. Ooh, okay, I like that. Is it seven or like different I, personalities? Or I don't something? know. That's my first time hearing that. I really? Like it. It's like they like everybody's got like different faces that they show, you, like a face that they have for when you're in public, when you're one on one, when they're mm -hmm. alone. That makes sense. Okay, like different ways that you present yourself to the world mm -hmm. as opposed to you know when you're with your family or when you're just by yeah, yourself. Exactly, okay. and it's like I don't know if that's. You know, thinking about it, I don't know if like psychologically, like that's uh, something that's not as common nowadays. Or it's gotta be like all of. If are you the same person when you go to the grocery store? This, that, the third. It, and if I, you don't feel like you are, like what is happening in your life where you feel like you gotta put another face on? Dissecting the human mind. Oh, with it's Marina serious, Sorry, <laughs> I can go there. It's, it's bad. I know. I love that though. Hey, bottoms up. Mm hmm. Oh. Cheers. Cheers to that. And cheers to, we talked about 2021. What are we manifesting for 2022? Roots. 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 Okay. I want to start like, you know, spreading some roots. Like, oh. I feel like everything is relative. Okay. Like all the time. And, um, you know, we're building this house. Um, one of the gyms that I trained at just expanded. Mm -hmm. The gym that he trained, uh, Troy does jiu -jitsu at, they're expanding. Um, my massage therapist is expanding. My chiropractic office is expanding. I want to expand in the roles that I'm given. And I want like an opportunity to show how that will offer something like for, for even after I'm done. Okay, like kind of setting up those, like a, a legacy. Yeah, okay. um, in a sense, yeah. And just showing people that it, it can be done a little bit differently and like 
being a true individual and like really like sitting in the things that you are and not having to pretend what you're not. Cause I feel like that still happens and in the sense of pro wrestling and that should happen because that's how people find themselves. I just wanna like just bring my best foot forward, honestly. And true authenticity and I feel like it really shines through with you. So of course, I wish you the best of luck in this year and going forward with the house, with your family, with everything. Thank so you. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this lovely bowl of cereal and, and really changing my perspective on cereal with vegan marshmallows. <laughs> what an adventure. Uh, where, where can our breakfast buddies find you online and keep up to date on your journeys? Well, breakfast, breakfast pals. I'm Marina <laughs> Shafir everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And we will be starting up our Stronghold channel soon. So that will be on Twitch? Maybe a few places. Oh, a few places. We gotta get moved into this house and then I can actually... One step at a time. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, at least we got a little bit of a reprieve from the hustle and bustle. We got to sit down and enjoy some cereal and can't, see, can't wait to see what's next for you. I'm excited. Until next time, my breakfast buddies, continue to do your best to be your best. And we will see you later.